Hello there, DML Gamer. Today we are back and we have made it to level 6 in the current A Birthday Divine Fest. And today I did want to go through some tips about how you can actually finish off most of these tasks in level 6. Because in particular, one question that a lot of people have relates to the breeding on level 5 and 6. Because for the other levels you can get the breeding done quite easily using the guide on the wiki or that's in my Discord server. But for example, on 5 and 6, it's actually not possible to get the full event points that you need in 5 and 6 with one breeding den. So that is the first thing to note about level 6 of this event. Because if we open up this image file here that shows us all of these different breeds, you'll see that we've got the amount of points per breed, the recommended offspring, and on the final level it's 650 currency per breeding task and you'll see that there is no dragon that you can breed to actually get that guaranteed and so your only real option is to use two breeding dens or if you're just using one breeding den then you'd basically just try and get as many points as you can, but don't stress about the actual breeding task all too much. Because for instance, you can get 500 points for breeding jungle, but with VIP 2 plus, that's a nine hour, 36 minute breed. So you can potentially do that over two resets, but it, it really depends on when you log in. What a lot of people end up doing is just breeding Lumino dragons, which if you've got VIP 2 plus is 6 hours 24 minutes. If you don't have VIP 2 plus for the reduced breeding time, that would be an 8 hour breed for example. So any of these dragons, sort of the war dragon plus, you can go for them just to get some extra breeding points. But if you've only got one breeding dem, you're kind of screwed. If you do have two breeding dens, then you can go for a combination of, say, um, Lumino plus War or something like that, and then that will get you as many points as possible. Or you could just go for, like, two Lumino breeds, and then that would be every six hours, 24 minutes, which should mostly keep you up to um, the actual event timers, and at least that would guarantee that you get every one of them set without having to worry about different breeds in each den. But again, it depends on how many breeding dens you've got active and uh, most of us don't want to use two breeding dens all the time because we want to save our extra den relics. So the breeding quest in particular is one that's going to be difficult. The other quest that I wanted to talk about for level 6 for getting the points that's going to be a problem for a lot of people is actually the battles quest. Because win battles, again, we need to get 650 points for this. I'm not going to struggle because I just save up all of my energy. You can see I've got 1,250 portal energy. For the average player, they're going to be using that energy to get through the map, or in general, they're just using it to be... It's the most efficient thing to do, because you should really be doing all of your blue map fights and everything every day to, you know, get as many... Um, well, as many resources as possible, because doing your blue map fights, it gives food, it gives gold, and... Um, we all need more food and more gold. We need gold so that we can put more things into our farms to generate more food. And we need more food because we want to level up our teams, ideally. Or at least add other dragons into our team. So, obviously, you go ahead and you do the battles. But a lot of players are going to end up running out of energy. So one thing that you can do to at least try and help with this winning battles quest, if you weren't aware, is you can do arena fights. And these will count towards the total amount of points. So if you are really strapped and you just need some bonus points, you can in fact do the arena. The other thing that you can do, I believe, is a sigil map. But obviously you only get four energy of that a day. So it's not exactly going to give you a whole heap of bonus energy. At least with the arena, you know, you'll get... A decent amount of energy back but it's still not going to be enough so maybe for this current event you might not be able to get the most value and get all of the winning battles done on level six but between now and the next castle event i highly recommend that you start saving energy to give you the easiest time for the second castle event because this is of course the first castle event and we need to get ancient emissary and for the second castle event, we need to get the Shoot and Doji Dragon. And generally speaking, the second castle event is more difficult than the first one. So 
if you have struggled, really struggled in this event to, you know, have enough energy to do these battles quests on level 5 and 6, I highly recommend that you start saving your energy, like, as soon as you can from this event. That might mean that you're not going to be very optimal in terms of getting all the resources that you can for a week, as in next week, but... You know, I think it's worth it for most players if you're actually trying to get both the Divine from the event and if you want to get potentially Chrono Isis by getting the Epics. So, you know, that would be my advice for the battles, but, you know, the best thing you can do is save your energy. They did do that massive change to Portal Gems, as in remove them, so now we do have to rely on what we get given by our friends every day, and even though Honestly speaking, I don't do it. During the events, it might actually be worth, you know, sending gifts to all of your friends because, you know, maybe it's just too boring normally. 100%, I get it. But just during the events or during the special event periods, it might be worth, you know, going through and gifting some people. But like I said, I understand if you don't, I don't do it because it's just so incredibly boring and tedious. Which, you know, I wish Gameloft would at least let you collect... 50% of the gifts, or like send out 50% of the gifts per day automatically, but no. But we've been dealing with that problem for a long time. Now the other quests for the most part are honestly pretty easy, so you shouldn't really struggle with the rest of them, but I will go through those just in case. Uh, for this event and for any future castle events, the catching creatures of course is quite easy since they're 50 each and you just see them as they're on the map and you collect them, you know, that's pretty self-explanatory. The creature collecting, unless they just don't spawn, is pretty easy. Now, the food should be the same as what you've been doing on all the previous levels. Six hour food gives 116 currency per farm. So any six hours worth of food, honestly, it's worth doing because it's super easy to keep up with the resets that way. And again, you can get it in not very many farms at all. That's all done. And then I could just do whatever I want in the other farms, for example. So that is the food collecting. The gold collecting, it is pretty self-explanatory as well. Like, I've got my gold vault, so I can automatically collect all of it. But not everyone is going to have enough, um, enough habitats to actually get this quest done. So one thing that you can do if you are a newer player that's really trying to get the gold collecting quest done, it might seem very obvious, but lots of people don't think about it, is just put down lots of really low level fire habitats and fill them up with as many dragons as you can. Like, I'm basically full. I've got no space whatsoever. But if you do have some space on islands, or maybe you could put some dragons in the vault and put down some more fire habitats for these events, put down some low level fire habitats during these events, fill them with fire dragons or whatever if you need to, level them up a bit so that they earn more gold, and then that way you will have a faster way of collecting more gold and getting that quest done. And that's what I had to do when I played on my Android account way back when because I had a new Android account that was like two weeks old and I did manage to finish off one of the castle events and that's how I did it, just putting down lots of low tier fire habitats and filling them up. It's pretty easy, pretty simple, but you might have to log in a few times to be able to finish it off. That's the only problem. Of course, the older players that have lots and lots and lots of habitats, we don't have to worry about that, but if you're a new player, do keep that in mind. Then the other quests that we've got, of course we've got the breeding that I went through, but the other one that we've got is feeding dragons. And this is also a super duper easy one, no matter who you are. Just get a new dragon in your habitat, put in a fire dragon if you need to, hatch it, and then just feed it. That's all you need to do, just feed it. And you'll see that we'll get plus 20 each, and then you'll only have to level it up to, what is that, level 9, and then we're done. Then you can go ahead, more options, sell, done skis. So that is how you can do all of these various quests. And the other thing about the breeding quest, which I haven't done yet because I'm going to wait for these two to finish and then I will do that, that's actually in one minute, is Kronos is a massive help during these events, genuinely. If you have Kronos time skip to use, definitely make sure you use it during specific times. And on level 6 you can potentially get the most points for using it. So it's a good idea to use it, and uh, 
sometimes some people do get tempted to use their breeding time skips, although I wouldn't recommend it if you've just got a massive surplus of them and you're really stuck and it's like you're really cutting it tight as to whether you're going to finish this event, you might want to do it for like a couple of resets only, but I don't really recommend that, but it is an option if you are stuck. But the other thing, of course, about getting through this level and all of the other levels, in fact, if you weren't aware, in my Discord server, we actually have posted, my, mainly Saar did, all of the different castle event maps. Because whenever we get these castle events, the cheapest chest pathways is the best way to get the most value out of these events and essentially get to the highest level the fastest. And we've got this level here for level 6, for example, which shows us which chest pass we should take. So on the right, it shows us the cheapest chests. And so, for instance, we've got chest number 1, which is 3,500. On the left, we've got a chest that's 3,145. Then with number 3, 3,145. And then the most expensive ones are going to be those two chests at the top which are going to be 4,500 and 4,501 each way. So, since we're on level 6 and we're getting the most amount of event currency, I don't actually care which one I go for first because, I mean, I'm going to be getting all of the chests opened anyway. But if you really, really want to go for Ancient Emissary, then make sure you're paying attention to which ones are the cheapest paths first. I mean... It depends. I do want to get Ancient Emissary mainly, and getting a duplicate Erlang, well, Chrono Erlang Shen isn't really the most important thing ever, but, you know, you should always be trying to follow the cheapest paths in these, ch in these events, the castle events, if you want to make the most progress. But if you are already on level 6, it does mean that you are earning the maximum amount of event currency now, which does mean that if you did want to ignore Ancient Emissary and instead just go for pieces of Chrono Erlang Shen, then instead of continuing on level 6 and opening those chests, what you can do is you can go back to the previous levels and open up the missing chests from those. That way, on level 6, maybe you'll only get the key on the final chest, and that means that you'll get Chrono Erlang Shen before you even get Ancient Emissary. That's something that we've been doing with these events for a very, very long time, and it just depends on what you're going for mainly. This is the only real part of the event which is like down to you what you want to go for first. Do you want to go for Ancient Emissary first or do you want to go for the Divine Dragon first? I'm not going to go back to the previous levels because again there's not really much point um, this soon because I'll just like YOLO the random chests. I'm just going to avoid the fourth and fifth chests because they are by far the most expensive. The others are eh, basically the same thing so I don't care too much. But I hope that in general that explains how we get through these castle events on the final levels because we have had to do this for many events now and you know since the last event did change it up a little bit and we had that changed version of the castle events. I know that that could have thrown a lot of people off. Because now we're back to the old style of castle events again. And then people are like, what? What's going on? I don't know what's happening anymore. Which is fine. It's understandable. I get it. Um, but, you know, that's how we can do these events. But again, you can get away with not doing all of the breeding dragons quests. And you can get away with not doing all of the wind battles quests. But if you're going to miss, say, a lot of the breeding quests, because you've only got one den, I would suggest trying to get 100% of the winning battles quests done. But, like, at my stage, I should be able to finish this event, like, no problem. So it's not something I really have to worry about too much. It's just since I've already got over a thousand energy, I am not worried whatsoever. And plus, I'm also very privileged in the sense that I do have instant win tickets. So any of you VIP players that do have instant win tickets, you can use those. They do count, and we of course will be able to save our energy that way. That's generally how I've managed to accumulate so much energy without never earning any extra food or anything. It's because I've got instant win tickets, which... Obviously, most people don't have 40 instant win tickets a day. That's, uh, most people don't have that. I've been playing a very long time, and I used to spend money on this game. I do not anymore. But it is one of the great benefits that I gained from doing that. 
Do I think that getting to VIP 20 just for the instant win tickets is worth it? No. Goodness, no. Definitely not. But I'm in a different position to a lot of people because, you know, I make the content for this game. I earn the money back from playing the game. Most people aren't in that situation. So, of course, most of them aren't going to spend enough to get to VIP 20. So, you know, one thing I will say if Gameloft ever hears me is that I still think that requiring so many battles to be done for these events is too much for most players. Like, the fact that we only get 25 points per battle, I think is too low. Like, they changed the creature points, and they've changed other things in these events before. I don't know why they haven't changed the battles. I think that is, again, them trying to either force VIP payments in, or some sort of monetization aspect in. I think that's definitely the primary reason why they've limited the breeding points. Because, again, it's not possible to get 650 points per reset with one breeding den. So it seems very obvious that they have tried to force purchasing the second breeding den so that you can get all your event points. And plus, if you are doing the castle event with one breeding den in general, and you manage to get through the event, you're not able to do any other breeding at the same time, because that's it. That That's your event. You've got to spend the entire week with a very full breeding den, and there's nothing you can do apart from that. So, even though I am very, very pleased that on level um, 5 and 6 they have improved the amount of elements that we can use in the battles, it is so much better this event than it ever has been. So, big props. I hope this continues into Castle Event Part 2. There are still some big problems that make this event very difficult for newer players. And maybe they don't want to change it. I'm just saying that I think changing in particular the breeding quest and the winning battles to just, you know, double the currency even would help a lot. Especially with the portal gems change. But will that ever happen? I don't know. We're still waiting for arena changes, so I doubt it, to be honest. But anyway... The other thing that we've got, of course, with it being a Friday, is we've got Black Market, and we actually have two, technically three, really good deals in here. We do have pieces for Ocean Coral, which I'm not going to even look at. However, we've got these three deals in the center. We have Times One Divine Ticket, but it's in exchange for a bit of food, so if you don't desperately need the food for something else, this is definitely worth it. Then we've got three Enchantment Tickets. Oh, this is tasty. Definitely buy those. The other... Thing that we've got in here which is the only time that I think is a good idea to actually spend gems to get them is these premium sigil chests and I try and mention this every time if you're ever gonna buy premium sigil chests this is the best time to buy them yes it's 400 gems but you get five premium sigil chests whereas normally these cost 99 gems each so essentially you're getting five for the price of four the only problem is, we are of course in the middle of a divine event, which means that if you need your gems to redo dungeon runs, you do not, you absolutely do not want to be using your gems on something like that when you need to use them in the dungeon to get more stepping stones for more divine tickets. So only purchase these premium sigil chests if you can definitely afford it and it's not going to ruin the, the rest of your divine event progress. I'm not going to buy them for that exact reason, because, again, I don't get to spend now, so there's no, like, making up if I screw up with the amount of gems that I need, for example. But there are certain things in this game that are somewhat worth purchasing with gems, other things that are just terrible, terrible deals. Like, two premium sigil chests and 400 of those trinkets for £4? No way. That is not worth it. And then, for example, 10 enchantment tickets for 125 gems? Hell no, you're going to get close to nothing out of that. 25 divine tickets in exchange for 200 gems? Hell no. The reason this is so bad is because if you go and open the purple chest in the dungeon, there's actually the chance of getting that many tickets in one of these purple chests. So that's 2,000 stepping stones. For one of those. So if you get a team that gets between like 1500 to 2500 per run, that's essentially the equivalent of 35 gems. Yet yeah, the drop of 25 isn't normal, as in it's uncommon. So I consider it more like two dungeon runs. So let's say it's roughly about 70 gems worth for people with a decent team, which is a hell of a lot cheaper than 200. 
70 compared to 200. God, it's a, it's a lot different. Of course, it does depend on how well your dungeon team does. So if you have a really horrific dungeon team, maybe it would end up being better to buy this. But in that case, maybe just don't gem the dungeon or buy this in general. <laughs> I don't know. I would only do it if you can guarantee a dragon out of the altar. So uh, I guess those are my little tidbits of um, advice for clearing these final levels of the castle events. Of course, we are going to get another castle event as well at the end of the event. And then we are going to get Hades in the dungeon at the end of the event as well. But for now, you should be making your way through finishing off a birthday, getting Ancient Emissary, getting your hands on Chrono Elang Shen, and hopefully, just in general, getting all of the rewards that you can out of this event. The other thing that you can do is after you've got an Ancient Emissary and you've gotten Chrono Erlang Shen, you'll notice that there's like a 100% completed, 78% completed. What you can do is you can go into these levels and go and finish off any of the tiles that you haven't done just for a like a couple of bonus rewards, a tiny bit of extra food. You can get some scrolls sometimes, which newer players might need. So if you've collected everything else and you're still earning event currency, go on 100% complete the event. It's uh, worth it for a couple of extra little tidbits that might help. But anyway, that is uh, the castle event guide for today. Like I said, all of the castle event maps and in general the event guide stuff and the stuff from the DML wiki was posted in here, so there's a link to the wiki link. We do have the amount of currency that you can earn per level and how many actions you'll have to complete to get that amount of currency. That is also from the wiki. And then we've also got that breeding table, which is the big question of a lot of people. This is it. This is what I always send to people when they ask, what should I breed? It's always the one from the wiki because it's basically never changed. I think they've had like two different versions of this depending on the event, but for the most part you can follow this and it will stay the same for like nearly every single event. So uh, always check that out again on the DML wiki or inside my Discord server. So feel free, you can just follow the event guides channel and put it in your own server if you want, or just exclusively look at that and never talk to anyone. That is up to you, but you know, that's one of the benefits of having Discord servers. Even if you don't want to chat or if you don't like people, you can just, you know, only look at the helpful event stuff. So anyway, I hope that you have a good day and I hope this helped out some of you guys that were confused now that you're on level 5 to 6. If you are still on level 5, it's going to be very close whether you're going to finish, but I guess it depends on your key luck and also if you're doing 100% of the resets and how soon it will be until you get to level 6. So, best of luck! I hope you get everything you want.